Well, hello, friends and family, and welcome back to another uh, midweek Bible uh, study on the book of Matthew. This week, we're going to be studying uh, Matthew chapter 6. Before we get started, I want to read the situation of Matthew chapter 6 so you know what's going on. Let's get started right now. After teaching about happiness and honoring the law, Jesus taught about giving, praying, and worshiping. So we're at a point now, my friends, where we're going to be talking about some of the things that Jesus taught to his disciples and what he wanted specifically for us to know. The book of Matthew is indeed from uh, Matthew's perspective, and we're going to be talking about that coming right up. So, my friends, as you know, when I do these uh, studies, <clears throat> I like to put the slides on the screen uh, that have the scriptures uh, that I'm going to refer to. So, I'm going to do that right now. You know, I'm reading uh, from a PowerPoint presentation that uh, if I was uh, to be teaching this in a church or something, I would be actually having this on a uh, screen in front of me or beside me or behind me, wherever it might be in the church. But being as I'm doing this on my uh, um, YouTube channel, I'm going to put them on the screen. I think that's easier for you to follow along. So let's get started with this slide right now. And it says Jesus teaches about giving. In verse 1 of chapter 6, it says, Be careful. When you do something good, don't do it in front of others that, so that they will see you. If you do that, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to those who are poor, don't announce that you are giving. Don't be like the hypocrites. When they are in the synagogues and on the streets, they blow trumpets before they give so that people will see them. They want everyone to praise them. The truth is, that's all the reward they will get. So when you give to the poor, don't let anyone know what you are doing. Your giving should be done in private. Your father can see what is done in private, and he will reward you. What is this saying, my friends? Is this saying that uh, we should be able to give to people without uh, ringing our own bell, you know, to allow people to know that it's not about giving, let me, let me kind of rephrase that. It says, um, don't let them see what you're doing. Don't let them know what you're doing. Why would it say, so when you give to the poor, don't let anyone know what you are doing. Why would these, these few scriptures say that? Your giving should be done in private. Your father can see what you do in private. Maybe this is talking about more than giving. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe this is talking about the things that you do in private. God knows about them. Maybe this is something that uh, has a different meaning to it. Let's look at this next uh, verse. Uh, this uh, slide says, Jesus teaches about prayer. In verse 5, we say, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to stand in the synagogues and on the street corners and pray loudly. They want people to uh, see them. The truth is, that's all the reward they will get. But when you pray, you should go into your room and close the door. Then pray to your father. He is there in that private place. He can see what is done in private, and he will reward you. Verse 7. <clears throat> and when you pray, don't be like the people who don't know God. They say the same things again and again. They think that if they say it enough, their God will hear them. Don't be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So this is how you should pray. And everybody knows the Lord's Prayer, but uh, the easy-to-read version has a different take on it. Our Father in Heaven, we pray that your name will always be kept holy. We pray that your kingdom will come, that what you want will be done here on earth, the same as in heaven. 
Give us the food we need for today. Forgive our sins, just as we have forgiven those who did wrong to us. Don't let us be tempted, but save us from the evil one. My friends, that is a pretty easy to read version of the Lord's Prayer. We go on to verse 14, it says, Yes, if you forgive others for the wrongs they do to you, then your Father in heaven will also forgive your wrongs. But if you don't forgive others, then your Father in heaven will not forgive the wrongs you do. Point well taken, right? Verse 16, Jesus teaches about fasting. When you fast, don't make yourselves look sad like the hypocrites. They put a look of suffering on their faces so that people will see they are fasting. The truth is, that's all the reward they will get. So when you fast, wash your face and make yourself look nice. Then no one will know you are fasting except your Father who is with you even in private. He can see what is done in private and he will reward you. And verse 22 says, The only source of light for the body is the eye. If you look at people and want to help them, you will be full of light. But if you look at people in a selfish way, you will be full of darkness. And if the only light you have is really darkness, you have the worst kind of darkness. Wow, wow, that, that is direct and to the point. Let's, let's talk about this a little bit. The only source of light for the body is the eye. So what we see, right? If you look at people and want to help them, you will be full of light. My friends, is it possible to want to help people for your own agenda, for your own purpose? That's a good question, right? It says here, but if you look at people in a selfish way, you will be full of darkness. So if you help people that's not about seeking their very best, their highest good, that's actually being done in a selfish way. And it says you will be full of darkness. And if the only light you have is really darkness, you have the worst kind of darkness. My friends, you notice how dark these uh, background screens are, but the letters are white. The reason that I do that is because when you watch this on your uh, computer or laptop or uh, your TV, the, the surrounding frame is black. So it shows up a little bit easier. You know, I've tried to do these with a... Uh, a white background and black letters and some reason the black background with the white letters to me it's bringing light into the darkness would you agree let's look on at the next uh, verse here it says verse 24 you cannot serve two masters at the same time you will hate one and love the other or you will be loyal to one and not care about the other you cannot serve God and money at the same time my friends that is very 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 true let's go on to verse 19 it says you cannot serve two masters don't serve treasures don't save treasures for yourself here on earth moths and rust will destroy them it's true and thieves can break into your house and steal them instead save your treasures in heaven where they cannot be destroyed by moths or rust and where thieves cannot break in and steal them your heart will be where your treasure is this is going to allow me to come into my ministry channels for heart-to-heart -heart refinement school as well as heart refinement for teens. I don't store my treasures up here on earth. I store my treasures in heaven because that's where the heart lives after death. That's where God lives, but God also lives in my heart. It's all about the heart, my friends. Your heart will be where your treasure is. So my treasure is to be able to help people refine their heart. Refining your heart is something that is necessary after baptism. When you make a decision to follow Jesus Christ and you are baptized, you are reborn at that moment. If your life stays the same way, you got baptized for no reason. Heart refinement is about refining your heart. Being reborn is about refining your heart. Let's look on in the next uh, scripture here, here. It says in verse 25, this is talking about put God's kingdom first. <clears throat> so I tell you, don't worry about the things you need to live. What you will eat, drink, or wear. 
Life is more important than food, and the body is more important than what you want. Let me read that again. And the body is more important than what you put on it. Look at the birds. They don't plant, harvest, or save food in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. Don't you know you are worth much more than they are? You cannot add any money to your life by worrying about it. It's true. Here we see verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? Look at the wildflowers in the field. See how they grow? They don't want or make clothes for themselves. But I tell you that even Solomon, the great and rich king, was not dressed as beautifully as one of those, one of these flowers, it says. If God makes what grows in the field so beautiful, what do you think he will do for you? It's just grass. One day it's alive and the next day someone throws it into a fire. But God cares enough to make it beautiful. Surely he will do much more for you. Your faith is so small. What is these uh, few scriptures talking about? This is talking about people that put their faith in worldly things. This is saying we need to put our faith and our trust in God to take care of us. I mean, it's, it, it, it's self-explanatory. I mean, if God takes care of the wildflowers in the fields and they grow, and God provides uh, um, makes clothes, they don't, okay? Don't worry about clothing. Look at the wildflowers in the field, see how they grow. Okay, so the, the wildflowers in the field, they're growing. They don't worry or make clothes for themselves. But I tell you that even Solomon, the great and rich king, was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. Isn't there something that talks about the birds in the field, too, that God takes care of them? Let, maybe that is. Let's look at this next uh, scripture here. Um, this verse is 31. Don't worry and say, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? That's what these people who don't know God are always thinking about. Don't worry, because your Father in Heaven knows that you need all these things. What you should want most is God's kingdom and doing what He wants you to do. Then He will give you all these other things you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Tomorrow will have its own worries. That is so true, my friends. I want to talk about this for a little bit. Don't worry and say, what will we eat? What will we drink or what will we wear? That's why these people who don't know God are always thinking about. I think that's true for anybody. We've got to think about these things. It says, don't worry because your Father in Heaven knows that you need all these things. It's true, we need those things. I think God is significant and, and powerful enough to supply those things that we don't have to worry about them. But I do have to think about, okay, what, what, what clothes am I going to wear today? I just reach in my drawer and I just grab a shirt. This is a little bit of an older shirt, but you know what? It still covers my body, okay? I don't necessarily worry about what I eat, but I do want to know if I'm eating healthy. I think that's a good thing to know. Um, sometimes a bowl of cereal is what I have. My most favorite meal for breakfast, I think, is uh, eggs and sausage and maybe some toast or maybe a couple of tortillas where I can wrap my eggs up. That's just a little bit inside about who I am. So, my friends, what I want to do now is I want to look at the um, observation that's coming from my uh, Max Lucado study Bible here. So uh, let's uh, check that out. As you can see on the screen uh, in the little corner up there, you're going to see that little observation. This is a short observation. It says, uh, God sees everything we do, and he will reward us even for the good works we do that no one else notices. That's the observation of uh, Matthew 6, is God sees everything we do, and he will reward us even for the good works we do that no one else sees. I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> I don't do these uh, YouTube channels because I'm doing good works that I want you to see. 
this is my ministry. And uh, it says, don't hide your light under a bushel. Put it on a lampstand for everybody to see. That's why I do my YouTube channels. Now we're going to look at the inspiration now. And uh, I didn't really like these stories, and that's why I do this uh, out of this Bible. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my friends, my, my throat keeps filling up with a frog. I wish you'd just jump out of there and leave me alone. Well, let's look at the inspiration. Various uh, incentives are held out by Jesus as he recommends the way of the kingdom of God as a path to be followed. They include this prospect of reward or retribution at the last judgment or in the course of history. Any courts of human applause is discouraged. Actions which are in themselves good are deprived of the virtue if they are done before men in order to be seen by them. And that comes out of uh, Matthew 6 verse 1. But the highest of all incentives is the example of God himself. His children should reflect their father's character. This incentive is clearly set forth in the Old Testament. One section of the book of Leviticus is commonly called the law of holiness because of its reoccurring refrain. I am the Lord your God. You shall... You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. You therefore must be perfect, says Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, as your Father in heaven is perfect. In this context, perfect means something like all-embracing in your love. Wow. Wow. Never thought about it like that. Let me read that again. In this context, perfect means something like all embracing in your love. There was nothing then in this part of the sermon which Jesus' Jewish hearers would find unfamiliar. They would readily uh, appreciate his argument that if God does the dis dis discriminate between the good and the bad in sending his gifts of sunshine and rain, his children should equally show kindness to all. It is, of course, one thing to appreciate the argument. It is another thing, whether for Jews or for Christians, to act accordingly. The, gospel, the Gospels bear witness to the fact that Jesus, Jesus' own life, was the practical manifestation of his teachings. This testimony is specifically explicit with regards of, to service and sacrifice. Repeatedly, he insisted that the highest honor lies in human service, not as the reward for it, but as the service itself. In the kingdoms of the world, the high and mighty received service. This was a sign of the honor in which they were held. Jesus' disciples found it difficult to grasp the thought that it is quite otherwise in the kingdom of God. It might be true. It shall not be so among you, he said to them, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Hmm. And that's from Jesus, Lord and Savior, by F. F. Bruce. Okay. Now, my friends, we're going to take a look at the statement of action, as you can also see that little card up there. Now, this, uh, like I said, uh, when I do these uh, studies, these come with questions, uh, personal questions, and then it uh, kind of gives us a little sentence on how we can apply this. So, my first question, how can you anonymously give to someone in need today? But I make it personal because this is my personal lifestyle channel. How can I anonymously give to someone in need today? Well, we can um, put a uh, donation in the cash box at church. That's one way to do it. If we just put cash in an envelope, they wouldn't even know where it came from. But this is saying, don't let people know what you're doing. But if I write out a check or if I pay online, people are going to know I'm doing that, right? Okay, so maybe just... 
putting some cash in an envelope. I think another uh, thing that I've thought about is uh, my church gives out uh, gas cards, $20 to King Supers. If you need groceries, if you need gas, you can use that $20 card. My wife and I have had to use that several times. I think one of the benefits that I could do is maybe go out and buy $100 worth of them, get me you know, four or four or five of those cards and put them in an envelope and just put them in the, in the offering box at uh, church. The church would know what to do with those things, right? That would be something I can do without people knowing it, right? Okay, and the next question is, is what changes need to be made in your prayer life? So let's change it. What changes need to be made in my prayer life? I do find myself uh, repeating the same blessing when we say a meal. Sometimes I switch it up, but maybe I could change that a little bit. You know, maybe a blessing at the mealtime um, is the same thing. I don't know. Maybe make a comment in the descriptions below and underneath the descriptions and tell me if you say the same blessing over your meal. Okay. This next question is, how can you make worship a higher priority? How can I make worship a higher priority? To me, I think worship is the highest priority in my life. I worship God, first of all, through just talking to Him, adoring Him. I also uh, worship God through uh, singing praise and worship music. I think one of the, my most uh, favorite things to do is to take a drive in my pickup and just uh, crank uh, praise and worship music and just sing uh, to the Father and you know just uh, lift my hand up and, and sing those praises. I think that's uh, the best thing that we can do. And it says here, my friends, identify the needed changes and make them. So how do we identify the changes that we need to make in giving without knowing or in our prayer life or in our worship to God? How can we make those changes, my friends? Now, what I'd like you to do now, my friends, is uh, I'd like you to check out uh, my Thanksgiving video. I did a little Thanksgiving praise and... Uh, um, give people a tour of my house and uh, let them know what was going on. So my Thanksgiving uh, video, that's all I want to leave you with, except for this. May God bless you. May his light shine upon you and may Jesus always bring you joy. I'll see you in Sunday's video where we talk about more on when does a boy become a man.